So that's the power supply and here I immediately see that we have uh, the reefer caps and uh, yes, these can easily blow so uh, I'm gonna remove those and see if I can find some uh, modern uh, replacements. I took the whole power supply out of the machine and taking a closer look at it, it is actually quite similar to uh, <laughs> another power supply. I'm not really sure where I've seen this before, but uh, there are uh, two uh, small reefer caps there and uh, you can remove those without an issue. It should uh, not uh, provide any problems for a machine. However, the machine might then produce noise back into the power uh, grid of your house. So I'm not really sure if that is an issue anymore. The other caps look all right. They are not bulging, so yeah. Just gonna clean away some dust. Let's remove uh, the reefers and uh, after that I can see if I can find some replacements. By the way, I did short out these uh, electrolyte capacitors before I started uh, working on this. For this uh, big uh, 100 nanofarad, I have uh, this replacement. It's uh, quite smaller. I'm not really sure if I can fit. Yeah, there seems to be <laughs> uh, holes for uh, narrower uh, types of caps. So that should fit uh, straight in. Just need to uh, use my soldering iron to uh, open those holes. There you go. Then some flux. For the two uh, 10 uh, nanofarad or 0 0.1, 0 0.01 microfarad, I don't have a direct um, replacement. I think I have uh, 47. I have a lot of these, but uh, normals. These are 47 nanofarad. So instead of having a 10 nanofarad, uh, this old capacitor, I can use uh, actually 2.47 nanofarad. This will in parallel essentially be the double farad values. So um, if you put capacitors in parallel, you can uh, add their values and the total capacitance will be the sum of each of those so 10 nanofarad and this will be around uh, yeah between 10 and 9 nanofarad so i think this will be okay and i don't think it matters that much either just to make sure my assumptions are correct i'm gonna measure the old capacitor and it reads 12 nanofarad Check this then with the two in parallel. Yeah, 10 nanofarad, so that's uh, close enough. We're good to go. So this as well has uh, two different uh, sizes in the holes uh, or widths between the holes. So I can just put the one uh, there and the other one in the <laughs> wider position it's not going to be pretty but it works then just some solder there and uh, 
we made ourselves uh, the required x2 capacitor value. Of course, I do the same with the, the other one, double up in parallel and uh, yeah, this should work. However, I will never recommend you do this if you don't know what you're doing, because uh, if you short out something, uh, yeah, do a mistake, then uh, things can blow up in your face when you turn it on. <laughs> While I have the power supply out, I check that uh, none of the other solder joints are bad. And actually I found one here. Do you see this one? Go zoom in. It's going to uh, this uh, ground pin on the other side, I think, and uh, it's loose. So I'm just going to go over some of the solder joints uh, with my soldering iron. Power supply is uh, back into its place and uh, all the connections are back. There's one extra outlet for the power supply here. I'm not really sure what that is supposed to be used for, but uh, yeah, I think I'm ready to assemble this machine now and hopefully it will work. I will <laughs> try and turn it on before I completely put everything back into the case. Let's see now, do I dare to power this on? It is in the on position, but the main switch is still off. So let me try now if I dare. Yeah, I heard a beep and nothing blew. So <laughs> I, I guess the, it worked and I'm gonna turn the machine around and see if the screen actually came on now it is upside down so uh, <laughs> let's see if we get anything on uh, the screen yes this one you need this terminator or otherwise it will uh, use external video i think <laughs> yeah sure enough there it actually says insert disk in drive a and press return <laughs> upside down <laughs> okay so uh, the machine is still working i put everything back in the correct order now and uh, happy about that so now i'm gonna insert it into its uh, newly cleaned uh, case or suitcase or whatever it's called The machine is fully assembled and uh, oh boy it looks uh, nice now all clean and white and uh, <laughs> yeah I removed a lot of uh, black uh, scuff marks all over the case uh, I didn't do anything with uh, slight yellowing on the case because I'm gonna wait until um, the spring when we have strong Sun here and uh, just put it outside for a few hours then yeah, much nicer now, all the dirt gone, ready for some testing, just inserting the keyboard and uh, turn it on to see. <laughs> so can this machine run anything exciting other than uh, CPM? Well, we'll see about that. Ready to rock and roll. <laughs> Let's see now, does it uh, turn on and boot? Beep. Let's wait for uh, the CRT to warm up. There's a picture. 
insert disk in drive A and press return. Alright, so it's loading right away. <laughs> nice. I want to check if uh, drive B is actually working as well. So we can uh, exit this uh, menu with uh, escape and uh, go into CPM and uh, it has 60k available. Uh, so uh, let's change to B then. B colon. Alright, the drive B is spinning up. Dir. <laughs> Okay, so here's something, a uh, club, matte, dogbook, diary, and some uh, school stuff. So uh, that means that the uh, drive, um, oops, <laughs> both drives are working. And we can try uh, WordStar. Not sure how readable this is. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so here's some um, documents. <laughs> I'm not gonna go into this. There might be some uh, personal um, information here that I'm not uh, gonna reveal. So there is some um, tools here on this disk. There's some utilities, graphics, modem connection, <laughs> self-portrait. <laughs> What's that? Okay, <laughs> nice. Uh, graphics. This machine cannot produce bitmap graphics. It can only produce uh, text characters. So, um, yeah. CPM utilities. Layout of memory. <laughs> so it has 4K video RAM and the rest is available for uh, used by uh, applications. All right, so that was a little bit of CPM. I um, did clean the keyboard, uh, but uh, I haven't done a real keyboard test. So let's see if all the keys are working. Yeah, everything works. Yeah, every key is working just fine. Nice. One more thing I want to test before I finish up this machine is to use an external monitor. And I have uh, set up my television here again and I connected a, a video input. And uh, now I'm going to connect this to the front of the machine. <laughs> so I actually had to put the machine down to the floor. So. Um, yeah, just gonna hook it up to the video out and turn it on. <laughs> All right. So it, uh, yeah, it produces a picture, but it is a little bit unstable. Let me try and switch source and back again. That uh, used to help. So now it just blinks. <laughs> But there's also a picture on uh, the CRT on the actual machine. It's only monochrome, of course. There's uh, no colors on uh, this machine. All right, I just took out the cable and inserted it in both uh, ends. And uh, now it's uh, quite stable. So this is uh, quite readable. However, the content is a little bit uh, <laughs> bigger than uh, uh, the actual picture on the TV. So. Uh, not sure if that's possible to adjust on this TV. There is in fact a possibility to adjust uh, <laughs> the picture. So uh, now it is actually full content on the TV. So now it is actually usable uh, with the TV. <laughs> Not dirt, but dear. Where is the delete button on this machine? All right, I think that's it for this video. Uh, not a whole lot of interesting things to do with this machine. I don't have any other floppy disks for it. So uh, <laughs> I could perhaps try and make uh, some uh, or try to use a GoTech drive or anything like that. But uh, that uh, will must be in another video. So hope you enjoyed this video. And as usual, thanks a lot for watching and a special thanks to my um, Patreons. Uh, see you. Bye bye.